Thank you. So welcome um, everybody to this session on blogging tips, um, how to be a great blogger. My name is Teresa Corcoran. I am uh, the, I'm in the communications team at IIED um, in the UK. And in my job as uh, in the communications team, my role, one of my role, one of my roles is to edit the blogs that come to me from our researchers. Um, so, um, I have, um, yes, I've got lots of experience of having edited hundreds, hundreds of blogs. Um, and what I want to share with you uh, over the next 30 minutes is some of the tips that I give to our researchers when they're writing. Um, so, um, it sounds from, from what I've heard that some of you have blogged or are thinking about blogging. Uh, what I'm going to share today, I'm basically going to run through some some, some top tips on getting your blog read and ways for it to have the most impact. So we're going to look at some questions that you need to ask yourself before you even start writing your blog. Um, we're going to have a look at the structure, sort of some top tips of how to structure your blog. Again, it's really useful if you can think about uh, what the, what the uh, blog will look like before you start writing. And then some tips on, um, on sort of writing itself. So looking at sort of the language and the tone and that kind of thing. So I'm going to kind of make the assumption that you all are relatively familiar with blogs. I'm just trying to forward my slides here. It might just take a second. So a blog is um, an online article written either for personal use or to fulfill business needs. So that is a kind of, I mean, there's, there's very, very, there's, blogs are very uh, wide and varied. There's lots of different types of blogs out there, but that's your sort of basic definition. Um, but what I would like to know from you all very quickly in the chat box is why you would blog in the first place. Any ideas from anybody about why you might blog? Please be bold. We've got, we're, we're under not much time here. So any quick ideas on why you might blog? Change the world. Change the world. <laughs> That's pretty ambitious, yeah. <laughs> if you uh, if you get your blogs to be so excellent, they can certainly have really big impact. Any other ideas? I usually blog only when someone forces me to. It's because okay. someone's making me do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are. Uh, this is like they're an output for delivery. That's that that is often the case, and that can happen in IID as well. But that's a nice one to share success, success stories or lessons learned. That's a really nice one. Um, yeah. So uh, blogs are really short, snappy reads. They're really popular. Um, and they are a quick, easy way of sharing information. That's why, that's why I would say that you, um, you might want to blog in the first place. They're really short, easy and popular. There's also lots of flexibility with blogs. You can do anything you like with them. You can write about research, you can write about a project, an event that you've been to, um, you might have tips that you want to share, you might want to start a discussion, Lots and lots and lots and lots of flexibility. So that might be a reason uh, as to why you blog. But one point I make, uh, and this might sound really obvious, but I'm going to make it anyway, is because you've got something interesting to say. And um, yeah, I come across lots of blogs and you've got to remember that we are in a kind of situation, a kind of a t um, an information overload almost when uh, we've got not only sort of lots of information out there, but lots of lots of blogs, lots of people are writing blogs, lots of people are reading blogs. So that means that you are sort of competing with lots of stuff out there. So ask yourself really honestly, before you start writing, have I got something interesting to say here? Is this really interesting? What, and if it's not, what can I do to make it more interesting? So almost sort of being really honest with yourself um, about whether people are actually going to want to read this. Um, but actually, one point I make is that even though you might have something interesting to say, that in itself is not enough to make sure that your blog is going to get read. You have to be more strategic than that. Um, you know, they are short, snappy reads, they're popular. Um, but yeah. Just because you think you've got something interesting to say, um, it's not enough. You need to ask yourself some questions. And any ideas from anybody on what those questions might be in the chat box or um, 
or on the microphone, what, what questions might you need to ask yourself before you start writing? Any ideas? Okay, I'm going to kick you off with the first question that I ask. Who is the audience? Charlotte, that's an excellent one. That's actually second on the list. Who is the audience? Any idea? Well, I'll kick you off with the first one. The first one is the what. Like, what is it that you want to share? Is it research findings? Is it, um, are, is it tips on, on the back of a field event that you've been to? Is it a story that you want to share? Are you looking to start a conversation? So what very specifically is it that you want to share? Um, and what I ask researchers to, for before they start writing bl blogs is to sort of say to me in one single sentence, what is it that your blog is going to be about? So my blog is about, say for example, my blog is about sharing research findings on the importance of climate, climate information for CBA. You should be able to tell me what your blog is about uh, in one single sentence. So get really, really focused. The second point is the who, indeed, Charlotte, who's the audience? So you're not just thinking about what you want to say, but you're thinking about who you want to say it to. So what, who, who is that out there? What do they need to know? What do they want to know? You're not sort of thinking about necessarily what everything that you know about this topic, but you're thinking about your audience and what it is that they need to know. And a, another question sort of attached to this is what do you want them to do? So are you looking within so any type of communication, there's almost, it almost falls within sort of two major categories. So the sort of the push and the pull, you might be familiar with that. So um, whether, to, whether you're sort of pushing out information or you're drawing your audience in. So, and both of them are completely, completely viable. So, but what are you trying to do with your blog? Are you trying to, is it just sharing information or are you trying to, or do you want them to get in contact with you? Are you looking for feedback? Are you looking for them to collaborate? So thinking, who is the audience and what do you want, to, what do you want them to do after they finish reading your blog? Any ideas on the third key question that you might ask yourself before writing? Anyone? Where or how? Yep, yeah, why? These are all, yep, yeah, they're all good. So on the where, is your blog particularly relevant to a particular region? The why, I think that's good. That I imagine is potentially covered by the what. Like what are you writing? So what, why is this important? Platform, we're gonna talk about distribution towards the end, that's good. But one question I would ask is when? Like why are you writing this now? Why is it important? Is there a particular reason? Is there, is there a, a policy dialogue that's happening at the moment? And that's what's prompted you to write this. Uh, is there an event happening? Is there a particular sort of moment in time? So, so the reader knows up front, you know, this is all very well, but why are you telling me this now? So, and if there isn't a particular kind of peg for your blog, try to sort of think of one. Look on the horizon and see what's happening out there. What social media discussions are happening that you could use to make your blog more relevant? Because, um, so say for example, if somebody who is not connected with CBA, for example, is, is writing about their research findings, if they can link what they're saying to this big international online event that's happening, those discussions are already, on, already sort of underway. So you can kind of piggyback on what other people are talking about. So thinking about the when is also a really, a really good thing, a really good question to ask yourself. So if you can answer what, you can answer who and you can answer when, you have got, I would say, the really, a really good grounds for, for writing a really good blog, really good strategic blog with impact. Um, if you can't ask any of those, uh, answer any of those questions, I would tell you to go away and do some more thinking about it. So to get really focused. Is that all clear so far? I'm gonna crack on. Um, what are the key ingredients of a blog? In the chat, please. What is it about blogs that make them different from other types of communication? These are all sort of useful things for you to be bearing in mind when you're writing. Key ingredients for a blog. What are the key characteristics?
photos. Simplified terms, yeah, excellent. We'll talk about why it's really important to have photos to bring your blog to life. Simplified terms, absolutely. I'm going to tell you why it's important to keep blogs short in lots of different ways. In fact, we'll kick off with that. So the first thing about blogs is that they are obviously they are online um, and that they are supposed to be sort of short, easy to read pieces. They're, they're, read, they're, they're sort of written to be read on the go. So key is keeping it short. And so by short, I mean short in length. I mean, and any any ideas about how short a blog should be? No, number of words, anybody? So I would say a good blog in length is about 600 to 800 words. Um, we're thinking short in terms of short short language, uh, short words. So you're keeping the the the, the language really um, simple and general and easy to read. Uh, you're thinking about short sentences. So if you imagine when you're reading um, text online, uh, even two sentences can very quickly turn into a paragraph. So it's really important to keep your sentences short um, and 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 your paragraphs as well. So really, when it comes to blogs, uh, less, less is more. Um, people are not coming online to read blogs, to read sort of long analytical discussions. Um, and we, you know, we know that when we're reading online, we read, we read it in a very different way than we would do with print, sort of in newspapers, um, newspapers or, or other printed matter. You, um, you, know, you're, you, you, you read it differently, you're scanning information, you're looking to extract information quickly. So people will not want to run through 2000 words of text, they're looking for short answers and they're looking to extract information. Easy to read, um, this is also really important. It's important that you have a clear argument and that it, and, and that it flows. So again, you know, making sure that you are doing, you're doing all sort of the work with the blog writing. Um, you shouldn't be making it difficult for your reader to sort of think, what are they trying to say here? Um, you know, it should be very easy. There should be a very sort of clear structure um, that's easy to follow and that your points are easy, uh, are, are sort of well made. I think, Charlotte, you have said um, it is usually, you are writing it, it's usually by your, you as a person rather than an organizational thing. Absolutely. Blogs are uh, an opportunity for you to get your personal voice across. That's why people are reading your blogs. So it's an opportunity for you to make your, your voice heard. Uh, so it's not just the research, for example, that you're writing about or, um, you know, the, the, uh, the event that you've been to that you, you're sort of reporting back from. It's, it's what you thought, what you think about that research. Uh, why that why that event was relevant to you that's interesting so really really use this opportunity to sort of get your get your voice across a next point is that is on the tone uh, blogs are very informal they're conversational so I would sort of say when you are writing your blog write as you as much as you can write as you would talk um, you know they're, 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 they're short they're ways of sort of starting conversations so keeping it in the first person um, and I've also put that another key characteristic is links. You'll see that uh, blogs are often not packed full of links, but they, you're, they're often sort of a gateway to other information. Um, so that's, that's a characteristic that you'll often see. But I said to use caution. Anybody, I, anybody any ideas on why you shouldn't, you shouldn't overstuff your blog with links? Anyone? If you have lots and lots of links in your blog, what do you think might happen? Distracting. Distract the reader, exactly. I mean, what you want to do is enhance your blog with more information. But what you don't want to do is send people off in another direction. So if you're sending, if you, if you keep sort of putting your reader into lots of different places, the danger is that they will leave your blog and go somewhere else. So you're looking to sort of include information to enhance what you're saying, uh, but not sort of overdo it. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got the checklist so far. We have established that we've got something interesting to say. We have uh, ascertain that we know what we want to say and who we want to say it to. 
we've checked that it's timely and relevant. So we've asked ourselves about the when. Um, you've got your key characteristics in mind. So you're remembering that it's online. You need to keep it short. You need to keep it personal. You need to keep the tone conversational. What next? So I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the, the advice I give on structuring. I've got just 10 minutes, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Sabrina. I've got just 10 minutes left. I've got so much I want to still share with you. Okay, quickly through planning your structure. So um, obviously blogs are very different in nature. Um, but this is quite helpful if you are just sort of if you if you're if you're struggling to get going basically, um, if you've got a bit of writer's block. But if you sort of think about a blog being 600 to 800 words, this is how it's basically set, uh, set out. So a headline of about seven words. Don't want it to be too much uh, too much longer than that because if you think about how a web page appears, um, you don't want it you want it to go over one line. You don't want to have a headline that's running over two or three lines. It's just too long. Um, your introduction of about 50 to 150 words. The middle is about 400 to 500, and the end where you round things up about 50 50 words. And when you look at it like that. That can just be really helpful in making, you know, just breaking it down like that can help. And a great photo. And I have, I think it was Charlotte who mentioned the importance of having, oh no, Coral, sorry, who the importance of uh, of having a great photo. So it is a bit of a cliche to talk about, um, you know, a picture speaking a thousand words, but actually with blogs, it is really the case. So while you're writing or before you start writing a blog, think about what photo might go with it to help bring it to life. So you're thinking about something really colourful, something with lots of impact. You want a photo to show action. It might very well show people. So you've got the sort of, you know, the sort of human angle in there. Um, and I'm not going to have time to go through all of these different sections, uh, but I do want to, uh, but I will sort of just tell you, you know, go through briefly what you're trying to achieve with the headline, with the introduction and the middle. Um, because as I say, it's really helpful if you can think about the different sections of a blog and what you're trying to achieve. Um, right, but, I'm, but before we do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna focus on the headline because I think a headline is the arguably the most important thing for a blog. And I think this is useful as well because this basically applies to any type of communication. It applies to a blog, it applies to a policy briefing, to a report, even to a presentation. Having a good headline is really, really important. Um, and the way that we look at it is like, um, you know, bearing in mind that there's so much information out there, uh, it is essentially, your headline is almost like a call to action. It's asking people to invest their time in reading your blog and recognizing that we're very poor, time poor. There's loads of information out there. You have to make that really, really strong. Um, and every sentence counts, obviously, in your blog. You're, com you're competing with so many people out there. Uh, you want people to read on to the next sentence. And the first sentence, the headline, is the most important uh, important sentence of all. And there's loads of sort of stats to back this up. So one of those is eight out of 10 people will read your headline. Two out of 10 people will go on to read the rest. So it really, really is absolutely critical to get a really good headline for your blog. Um, so what makes a good headline? Anybody, any quick, quick words from, from uh, the group on what makes a good headline? Any single words? To describe what makes a good headline. Anyone? Any ideas? Are we thinking sort of long, boring? Are we thinking clever, catchy? Okay, I'm not getting any any uh, suggestions from the floor, but what, what you're looking for really, being brief, catchy words, yep, absolutely, catchy. You're trying to draw in your audience with your headline. So brief and catchy, that's good. Thanks, Rizai. I mean, you, I, I would sort of say that uh, with any blog, yeah, yeah, you're trying to sort of bring in your audience. 
Um, bamboozled by bamboo. This was a blog that one of our researchers wrote about the risks of um, the bamboo business to their forestry, uh, the bamboo sort of industry to their forestry businesses. Uh, will COVID-19 leave fuel rich African countries gasping for breath? So these are kind of powerful, catchy headlines. And here we're sort of playing on the words of using sort of fuel uh, and breath. Feeling the love, that was a, uh, a headline of a blog we wrote recently about our uh, uh, a survey that we did of IID publications. Um, basically, everybody said that they loved what we were writing. So that was the title there. Creating waves for small scale fisheries. Uh, so you can play around with imagery a little bit. Um, a new kind of brew, uh, smallholder coffee and carbon. So, um, sorry, uh, yeah. What we sort of talk about is trying to get a, um, a balance between clear and clever with your headline. So it's no good having a really kind of cryptic headline that sounds really clever, but actually it doesn't really give any indication of what the blog is about. At the same time, you don't want it really informative in a way, but then it becomes boring. So you're trying to find a kind of a balance between something that's going to attract people's attention, but it's also going to give them a, cl a clear idea on what the blog is about. So that's my advice to the researchers, like thinking about a balance between clear and clever. But I have got some top tips for you on for your headline in case you're struggling. I've got sort of three tried and tested formulas uh, of headlines that work. So first off, we've got the um, we've got the the question headline, I call it. I'm just realizing that I can't see the chat anymore, Sabrina. So if um, anybody has any, how can I see that? It's just gone off. Check back on the, from the top, you say it was coming off from there. Oh yeah. Feel free to unmute mics anybody because I'm just struggling to see the chat at the moment. Okay. So the question headline. So with a question headline, can a new kind of consumerism help climate change? What's stopping women working? What is climate ch uh, change adaptation? So with a question headline, what you're doing is you're constructing a question that you know your audience wants an answer to. You're sort of saying to them, um, you know, I know you want the answer to this and I am going to tell you the answer if you read my blog. So it's a really good way of engaging people. And we as human beings, we like being asked questions. Um, you know, it's our, it's our immediate response. If we're asked a question, it's to respond, even if it's just sort of in our heads. So by, by sort of setting a question out in the headline, you're already engaging people by already asking a question. So the question headline is a really good one. Uh, the next one is the explanation or how to headline. So how to finance a new climate economy, why drug prices are rising, why legal timber matters. So the explanation headline is similar to the question headline. Um, and, but instead of asking a question, you're sort of uh, presenting an explanation. So you're telling people how they're going to tackle an issue that they're interested in. Um, the numbers headline, this is also a really nice tip. So let me just, um, so three reasons why pressures on land rights are changing. Five lessons on community-based adaptation, seven principles for making farming more sustainable. So we like order, we like organization in our brains. We're very big, we, you know, we're often fans of lists. And with the numbers headline, what you're doing is you're telling your, um, you're telling your reader, I know that you want to know about this issue and I've already done the thinking about, I've already done the thinking behind it. I've already put it into a really easy order for you. So if you read my blog, I'm gonna tell you about this topic in very sort of simple logical terms. So that is appealing to people. They know that they're going to read a kind of really ordered list. Um, the next, uh, the, so they're, they're my kind of tips on, if you're struggling for a headline, they are good. Uh, they're some sort of tried and tested formulas that work. Um, I'm going to just move on to this, the other different parts of uh, the blog. So we mentioned that once you, so once you've got your headline, then it's your introduction. So these are sort of two or three sentences, 50 to 100 words. 
uh, when you're really sort of trying, you know, having having won your reader reader over by uh, pulling together a really catchy headline, you're trying to keep their reader, the reader's attention, um, and you need to say in the introduction what, what your blog's going to be about. Why is it worth reading this? So. You know, you keep you're basically keeping the attention here. It needs to be short, but the idea is if you can keep your in reader engaged at the beginning, they're more likely to continue reading until the end. So the introduction is when you're getting your big idea up front. Um, the middle, so 450, 400 to 500 words. This is where you're really getting into the kind of meat of your argument, um, or you're getting into the sort of description of what you want to tell people about. Um, you're backing up what you're saying with illustrations and examples. You're thinking here about the what, the, uh, the why, and the when. So bringing back those questions like that's what you should be getting across here in the middle. And the end is where you close the circle. Uh, you might relate what you're saying in the end paragraph to the introduction. So um, you might end, if, you, if it was one of those, it's a blog where you are trying to sort of bring people in, you might end the blog with a question or a call to action. Uh, a request for collaboration. So that's what you might cover. Um, so that is my, uh, we're on 12 o'clock now. I'm sorry I have raced through that. Um, I don't know who is, uh, whether you're blogging, a couple of you said that you haven't blogged, but you're thinking about it. I can, um, I can sort of share uh, any ideas with you, give you some coaching if, if, if that's what you think you might be needing. Uh, answer any more questions but I did just want to end on one point uh, about what you need to do when you have finished writing your blog after you've put all this effort in to writing your headline to thinking about the introduction to thinking about the middle the ending the photo that goes with it my final word which I always give to researchers is that your work is not finished now and that you need to share your blog so quick thoughts if we don't mind just running over a couple more minutes Ways to share your blog from, from the floor, please. Any ideas how you'd be sharing your blog once you've written it? Uh, social media. Yep, social media, Twitter, Facebook, exactly. Also LinkedIn, if you have professional sort of network on LinkedIn. Yep, LinkedIn, the increasingly important way of sharing, of sharing uh, research, blogs, absolutely. Any other ideas? Old fashioned email is quite good. You know, there's nothing nicer than getting a kind of email from, uh, from you, the author to a researcher saying, I've written this blog on this topic that I know you're interested in. I'd love for you to know, what, I'd love to know what you think about it. You know, that's always a good option. Um, you, could, you could think about cross posting as a way of getting your blog that blog out there so we at iid we sometimes cross post other people's blogs um you know it's possible for you to feature other people's websites as well as your own if you have one um, as a guest blogger so yeah social media email all the different platforms um newsletters make connections with your own network see if they've got other ways that they might share I, i'm just sort of making that point because that, ten, that can be a sort of reaction that once you've finally got this thing done and signed off and finished, you're like, oh, I'm finished, but you're not. You've got to go out there and share your blog. Um, any question, any particular points that anybody wants to raise? Well, I know we're running it over slightly and I know people are very busy. Um, shall I, I, I'm wondering what the best thing, I can, I'm just going to uh, share my email here quickly in the chat box if you have any particular questions that you want to send to me. Uh, the session will be available over, um, the recording will be available and we can also make the slides available as well. Is there any burning questions that anybody has for me? Anything that wasn't clear, anything that I can sort of quickly, quickly go over or are people reasonably happy? I know it's been a very short session. Rizai. So yes, I think it was great. Thank you. I think it would know. It. So will you, will you be sharing the slides with us or we would have to go somewhere and get it? No, no, I can share the slides. I can share the slides. Okay. If you've got, you've got, you can see my email down there. So if you email me, I can, I can okay, reply and, and share them with you then. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. 
great, Coral, that's fine, absolutely. Follow up if you've got any questions. Okay, Sabrina, we're five minutes over. I'm conscious that other Zoom, other Zoom um, platforms need to be used. Uh, we okay to sign off? I've shared my email. If anybody yep. else has got any questions, they can done. they can join. Yeah. Yeah. If you feel that um, that's fine, yeah, you can sign off. All right, that sounds good. Thanks everybody for joining. As I say, get in touch if you've got any other questions. If you want to, if you want to share the slides, no problem. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Have a lovely day.